Greetings, friends, and welcome to Bettendorf Presbyterian Church. I want to thank you for joining us for worship this morning. I also want to thank uh, Chris Werner, our minister of music and, and worship uh, leader, uh, Jake uh, O'Connor, our Christian education director, Deb Swift, our organist, and our praise band for providing this worship experience for us today. Uh, today we gather and celebrate the glorious nature of God's compassion. So thanks for coming. Let us worship God. This morning's scripture passage comes to us from Matthew's Gospel, beginning in chapter 9, verse 35, and then moving into chapter 10, verse 8. Let us attend to the word of the Lord. Then Jesus went about all the cities and the villages, teaching in their synagogues and proclaiming the good news of the kingdom and curing every disease and every sickness. And when he saw the crowds, he had compassion for them because they were harassed and helpless like sheep without a shepherd. Then he said to his disciples, The harvest is plentiful, but the laborers are few. Therefore ask the Lord of the harvest to send the laborers into his harvest. Well, then Jesus summoned his twelve disciples and gave them authority over unclean spirits to cast them out to cure every disease and every sickness. And these are the names of the twelve apostles. First Simon, also known as Peter, his brother Andrew, James, son of Zebedee, and his brother John, Philip, Bartholomew, Thomas, and Matthew, the tax collector, James, son of Alphaeus and Thaddeus, Simon the Cananean, and Judas Iscariot, the one who would betray him. These twelve Jesus set out with following instructions. Go nowhere among the Gentiles and enter no town of the Samaritans, but go rather to the lost sheep of the house of Israel. And as you go, proclaim the good news. The kingdom of heaven has come near. Cure the sick, raise the dead, cleanse the lepers, cast out demons. You received without payment, give without payment. <laughs> No point. 
My friends, let us humble ourselves before our God. Let us join our hearts together in prayer. Let us pray. God of unity and peace, you know that we, we talk so much about peace, but at the same time, we make trouble for ourselves and for each other. We quarrel. We quarrel in the church and at home and online. We quarrel between races and nations and religions. We let our loyalties to things and ideologies surpass our loyalty to our Lord Jesus Christ. We think worldly wisdom sometimes looks better than the truth shown to us by your Son, our proclaimed Lord. We hide from the cross, thinking ourselves too good or at least above such humiliation. Forgive us, O God, in your mighty mercy. Embrace us with the, the Spirit's power of reconciliation. Fill us with a powerful light that would shine with your love into all the world. May we become even more committed to living Christ-like lives today and every day. In the name of our risen Lord and Savior, we ask these things as well as pray the prayer he taught us, saying, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive our debts as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory forever. Amen. Good morning. Today we're talking about how Jesus always had compassion towards other people and how we should also have compassion towards others. Compassion is a big word that simply means caring about the needs of others, feeling sorry for them, and doing something to help them out. Once upon a time, Jesus was teaching about compassion, about being kind and loving to your neighbors, and one of the men listening to him asked Jesus, who is my neighbor? The man wanted to know who he had to be kind and loving to. And so to answer him, Jesus told a story. And I'd like to tell you a story that's similar to the one Jesus told. Listen carefully and see if you can find who, who Jesus says our neighbor is. One day, not too long ago, at a school near here, a little boy was swinging on the monkey bars in the far corner of the playground. Because it had just rained and the bars were slippery, the boy lost his grip. He hit his lip on the metal bar, he twisted his leg badly, and fell right into the middle of a mud puddle. The boy was bleeding and hurt. He couldn't stand up by himself, and he was very dirty. He couldn't cry very loudly because it hurt to take a breath. Now the prettiest girl in his class walked by on her way to the water fountain. Her hair was always neatly brushed and she always had nice new clothes. She saw the boy lying there in the puddle and could see that he was hurt, but she didn't want to stop and help. I might get mud on my new socks, she thought, and I might get blood stains on my beautiful dress. And besides, I'm not really friends with that boy. So she walked by him, got her drink of water, and ran off to continue playing. The next child to see the, the boy was hurt was in a big hurry. He was playing lightning tag and he only had a few seconds left to try to tag the last couple of people and win the game. This boy was proud of being the strongest, fastest boy in his class. He could have easily stopped, picked the muddy boy up and given him a piggyback ride to the nurse's office. But he was more focused on winning the game so he ran right past the boy without looking back at him. Finally, along came a small girl who wasn't even in the same class as this injured boy. She heard the boy crying softly and walked closer to see what was wrong. This girl was not very popular, she didn't have very many friends, and she was very shy. It took a lot of courage for her to walk up to that boy and ask if he needed help. When he nodded his head, she walked right into the mud puddle, pulled him up, and even though she wasn't very strong, she helped him limp to the nurse's office. 
and then she went even farther and helped bandage him up and hold the ice bag for him. Now I'd like to ask you, which one of these kids was a good neighbor to the hurt boy? It was the little girl who went out of her way and stepped out of her comfort zone to help someone in need. And Jesus calls us to have compassion towards all of those who are in need, not just our closest friends or the people we normally hang out with. When someone falls, we should help pick them up. When someone is sick or hurt, we should take care of them. When someone is lonely, we should be there for them. When someone is sad, we should listen to them and help cheer them up. When someone doesn't have enough, we should share what we have with them. When someone is in need, we should help however we can. And that's how we can have compassion like Jesus. And that's how we can be a good neighbor to all. So let us pray. Dear God, help us to be compassionate people. Help us to live and love like Jesus. And help us to, to see those that are in need and go out of our way to help them. In your name we pray. Amen.
Today, my friends, I want to talk about something that uh, I've been struggling with, and maybe a lot of us have, and it's, it's this thing com- we call compassion fatigue. Um, a definition would be an indifference to charitable appeals on behalf of those who are suffering, um, experienced as a result of the frequency of the number of those p- appeals. There's one study I read years ago that said that on average, Americans face 600 Uh, emotional appeals every week. But the statistic that that I couldn't believe was that we say no to 590 of them, which means we have compassion and we act on compassion maybe 10 times a week. How different does the psalmist describe God's reaction to our continual supplications to him? When Yahweh hears the pitiful cry of the psalmist, the divine response is instantaneous, without hesitation, without limit. Psalm 116, we read, I love the Lord because he has heard my voice and my supplications, because he inclined his ear to me as long as I live. At the sound of human sorrow, human suffering, human misery, God's response is to incline God's ear. God listens to the cries of the lost and is moved to action every time, not 10 times out of 600. This kind of compassion is what motivates Jesus to call his disciples into active mission and ministry, a compassionate ministry. But but what is this compassion? In verse 36, today's passage, we, we read, He saw the crowds that had gathered as he, as he traveled throughout these, these towns and, and villages. He saw the crowds and he had compassion for them because they were harassed and helpless like a, a sheep without a shepherd. And so Jesus had compassion. But still, what is this compassion? Well, we have several definitions for compassion uh, includes simply feeling sorrow, uh, sorrow for someone or, or being sympathetic and, or simply being concerned for the welfare of, of others. But I think there is a better definition. In fact, I know there is because it's closer to the biblical understanding of, of, of this compassion that Jesus shows. And it is this thing we call empathy, the kind of compassion Jesus had for us when he takes upon himself the sins of all the world and he destroys them on that cross. In verse 36, Jesus is moved to compassion when he looks out at the crowd that has gathered. They've heard about his healings and and how he cures every disease and every sickness and how he proclaims a radical new concept, a good news of grace and salvation, the kingdom of God. But as Jesus gazes out upon the masses, he sees a people who have been harassed. And he realizes just how helpless they are without someone to guide them. He sees how vulnerable they are to bad teachings and and the figurative wolves that would prey upon these sheep without a shepherd. Here, we see the divine compassion Connected to those with poor health. Connected to the marginalized, the helpless, the hapless. Gathering because they've seen and they've heard this Jesus and the miracles that he is performing. And the good news he is proclaiming. But Jesus realizes that there are too few laborers to tend to the needs. When we compare this instance of compassion with with others that we find in the gospel, we discover there's a similar pattern. In chapter 14, the feeding of the 5,000, the crowds again gather, and Jesus once again has compassion on them. And that compassion is displayed through healing the sick among the crowds before he feeds those thousands that have gathered. Again, in chapter 20, Verse 34, Jesus encounters two blind men, and he is likewise moved to compassion. 
This compassion is demonstrated through the sight being restored to the blind. And even when Jesus tells the parable of the Good Samaritan, as we find it in Luke's gospel, Jesus describes the Samaritan as a person that is moved to compassion, to tend to the man's wounds, to, to bandage them and to bring them bring him to a place of healing. In each of these scenarios, compassion is directly linked to addressing the health and the wellness of those people. Wherever we see compassion in the healing of the sicknesses or the feeding of the thousands who are hungry, divine compassion is demonstrated with consideration of the health of others. When Jesus sees all of these harassed and helpless people, and when he realizes that there are few laborers that exist to help them, Jesus tells his disciples to hit the road. He gives them, us, a divine mission and arms them with specific rules for the road. First, they are to go out to the lost sheep of Israel and do two things, preach the kingdom and reveal the kingdom. And so first they preach the kingdom. The message is that the kingdom of heaven has come near. Now this implies an event rather than some kind of static condition or, or, or a location somewhere. This is the same message that Jesus shares as he begins his ministry when he calls his disciples to come follow him in chapter 4. But now Jesus tells these disciples that they will carry forward this message to the lost sheep of Israel. However, the message is that the kingdom of heaven is near. This message is explicitly tied to the actions of the disciples and are, that they're instructed to perform, to have compassion toward the lost sheep and when able to heal them. He then tells them to reveal the kingdom. The kingdom of heaven is to be revealed through the compassion of God a compassion the disciples are now instructed to demonstrate. This compassion is, is the kind that removes forms of oppression which fuel illness or, or diseases such as leprosy and, and other health conditions that often lead to those people being shunned by their communities. Reveal the kingdom, Jesus says. Cure the sick, raise the dead, cleanse the leper, cast out the demon. The disciples are called to compassionately remove all various forms of oppression that would keep them from the community. Jesus then gives the disciples some rules for the road, including the divine message to disperse divine compassion. The first rule of the road is to rely on the hospitality of others. If you are not welcomed, he says, then just dust your feet off and move on. They're not to be like the sons of thunder, James and John, who, who wanted to rain down the fire of God upon those who rejected Jesus. Now Jesus says, show compassion even when you're rejected. Another important road rule and characteristic of divine compassion is to simply heal, cure, cleanse without asking for any payment. You do it for free. God does. And Jesus said, you receive without payment. You already received the forgiveness of sins without anything you have paid for or done. So give this likewise without payment. The kingdom of heaven is near when human needs are met through those who freely care and love for those in need. No price can be placed on human need. Living a life committed to the teachings of Jesus Christ leads us to seek the health, the wellness of others. When Jesus looked out upon those masses and had compassion, he sent out his disciples with a mission, a mission that would begin to shape human history. Now, there are stories that abound throughout history about those who have fully committed and embraced this divine mission that Jesus gave the 12 when he sent them out to show compassion. There's an example, a great example, 
And in 369, Basil of Caesarea inherited a ton of money. And he decided that the best use of this windfall was to glorify God by creating a place where the sick and the dying would receive care. He built what eventually became the modern hospital, the first example of, of, of a hospital, Basiliad, as it was called. It turned into something more than just uh, a building. It was a, it was a small city dedicated to caring for and curing illness. The complex included facilities that could be compared to modern hospice houses and soup kitchens and infirmaries, a place where those who were on the margins of society could and would receive compassion. This is the divine compassion that we find through Jesus Christ, that where there is need, Jesus shows compassion. And not only does Jesus have compassion on us, he tells us to then show that same compassion to all others. Compassion is linked to action, an action that is liberating and brings healing and wholeness. So it is with this same divine compassion that Jesus calls us and sends us out on a mission to serve those in need. Where do you see the need for God's compassion? Go there. Go to that place. Go to those people. And be God's agents of compassion, bringing healing and wholeness and love and grace. Amen.
Now, my friends, wherever God takes you, go. Whatever the task, do it. Wherever the challenge, accept it. Whenever the call, answer it. Whichever the lesson, learn it. However dark the path, follow it. Because wherever God takes you, it is worth it. And remember, God goes with you always. Go and serve the Lord. Amen. Jesus summoned his 12 disciples, uh, <laughs> apostles or disciples, which is it? Uh, before the crowd actually gets to feed, before he feeds 4,000, 5,000, I don't even know how many he fed. So we're going to back up a little bit and start on another spot. It, that's found in, in Luke's gospel. He's, Jesus describes the Samaritan as a moving person moved, a movement, moving. Wow, 